name's Mark Smith. I run a small practice. I, I work on my own. Uh, but until recently, I worked at the GMA's Design for London team, uh, which is a public sector body uh, in the Greater London Authority funding regeneration throughout London. And I was focused in the Upper Lee Valley. So I've had a, a, a a lot of experience inside regeneration, and um, I thought that it would be good to talk about that culture, which is a really, really specific culture of project managers, and economists, and um, and things like dashboards, which I'll explain later. Um, and as a team, we we felt that we were making cities, and um, this image is a uh, public space. It's the kind of public space that architects like Richard Rogers would talk about. And it's the kind of public space that would get published. And this is an architect's photograph of a public space. It's not something I was involved in. Um, but I mean, the, the issue I always have with this, and, and where I'm sort of coming from in my practice, is that this is an object um, with an edge. It's here. And that's where the responsibility between this design or with this commission ends, and the local um, highways department's responsibility starts. And so what this is, is a, a thing that you can take a picture of and you can point at and you can say that's what we did and that's our design, we produced it. And, and I think that's a real problem for, for our profession and a, a real problem for our city. And I think, I think that our education hasn't taught us how to get out of that mode of thinking. It hasn't taught us that, that a city is actually a process and a and areas of responsibility, and that what we, what we shouldn't do is aim to produce products, but we should aim to be involved in that process productively. Um, and uh, the, uh, on the question of fight or flight, I know, I know it's kind of, I know it, it, you, you understand it's more complex than that, but th that idea that you, you're either someone who is fighting against it, and I, I'm not going to be involved, so I'm going to, I'm going to go away and protest, is, is kind of what Alberta was talking about in the last session, really interestingly, and that by not being there, you're having an influence, and it's, it, that's true, and it's valuable. And then I suppose the other, the other option is that you, you're involved, and you're implicit, and you're part of it, and, and, and by doing that, you're utterly compromised, and you've made this pact with the devil. And I guess, sort of, um, Owen Hathley was talking a little bit about that because he was kind of pointing at things and saying, well, why did that person do that? Why don't they do it better? And um, my, my problem is that, that both of those are, 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 are part of this same problem of architecture magazines and photographs of things, is that they're both, they're both positions of the critic. You point at something, you say, look at that, why is that like that? What, why, what, they did this thing, what is it? Why is that good or why is that bad? And both of those positions are that. My, my position is, and I, actually one of my notes was actually good on this thing. Um, I, I, um, I, I think um, what we need to do and what we should be teaching our um, What we should be teaching um, our young uh, young designers and architects is that we should, and what I think I like to do is to be productively and, and more expansively joining in. It's not making a pact. It's not selling out. It's joining in with the process because there isn't an evil monster that's trying to do horrible things. Um, it, the people that are involved in that process, the then, well, of which I was one when I was at the GLA, they did this, um, uh, those people, are, are, are people genuinely trying to do good things and trying to make the city better. And if you, as a, as a, as a young architect, at some point by accident, I didn't really realise this, but I, I sort of decided that I was interested in cities and ordinary places. And I wanted to do good things. And I think, you know, we all, we all feel that way. And the question, but the, the, where it falls down is the question that, no one asks is, if you want to do those good things, who are the clients that are doing them? So what, what often happens is you go through your education, you believe in what you're doing, you're young and idealistic and that's great. And if you're like me, you're a bit left wing and you're interested in those ideas. 
And then you, you, you come out of education and you meet a developer and you say, oh, this, is, this isn't what it is, it's awful, it's, it's terrible. And, and, and that's, you know, lots of people I know have gone through that process and they've been in a practice and they say, I hate it here, it's horrible, it's not what I want to do. And, and that's, the reason for that is because the clients who want to do good things aren't, and the work they do is not discussed in design schools. And that, that's local authorities are the main people who want to do these things. They're genuinely doing good things in the public sector. Um, that, that's what they're there for. Okay, it's hand-fisted and it can be crass, and they're totally unqualified to, to be doing them. But if you want to be involved in that good work and the type of work that, that I like, which is about place-making and place-shaping, then they're the people doing it. Um, and it's our fault that we're failing um, in the, to, to join in with this, and, and oh, and that's a bit dark, isn't it? But so the images I showed you before are, are what we would say is public space, and we would publish it in a magazine. But and then you go to them, and you, you feel like a designer, and you look at it and say, oh yes, I like the materials. I don't like the materials. Look at the detailing. Look at how this is um, organised. And then at the at the edge of the red line. As you walk home, you walk through this, which is 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 what I think is a, is is really public space. It's where I spent ninety percent of my time in the city, and it's <coughs> unfortunately a, a kind of byproduct or a sort of slag that's wiped off the top of highways engineering. And and I I think we're failing to engage and be part part of that. I mean, there's a sick part of me that kind of likes these spaces because I, I like ordinary things, but I'm also kind of aware that it's tragic that our city's delivered this way without us being part of it, without artists and designers being part of it. And I'm sorry, I, I, I don't want this to scare you, but um, I, I, I'm going to talk about two things, and this is one of them. And this is the, the process, this is how a project happens, a regeneration project happens. Now, Sorry to show you such a boring looking thing on a Saturday morning, but I want to talk you through it. So, um, this is how a GLA project happens. So, something like um, the Outer London Fund, which is a, a fund for um, regeneration projects on High Street at the moment, that some of us are involved in, and many of you will have seen things happening on High Street, happens like this. Um, tax and central money goes into the GLA, which is this box. And within the GLA, there's directorates and teams, like regeneration and urban greening is one of them, and culture and housing and land, and they have agendas. And there's some architects in there, but not many, especially not in a team like urban greening. Um, there's no artists, although there is the culture team who do really interesting things. <coughs> But how, how this relationship happens is really important because these, these teams have agendas and ideas which they communicate to the mayor's advisors who ultimately make decisions. But then these people are politicians who have agendas and ideals and this kind of loop is ongoing. But at some point that crystallizes into funding and, um, and the, the ideas about what this is and what you should fund goes up as well as down. So if you're in this world, you're, you're really important and you can really guide um, where money is spent in this city. And, um, um, and th th this, this, this is an area we don't talk about in design school. No, this isn't understood and it's not a career option. The career option is, oh, wouldn't it be great if you could work for Zaha or Rogers or something like that? But this is never discussed, and your, your skill set's never, the skill set to be in there is never given to you. Um, so when one of these teams gets a package of funding, it has objectives. They've set the objectives, this is what we're trying to achieve. In the case of the Outer London Fund, it would be things like higher footfall and lower vacancy on high streets. And that turns into a funding programme. And then what happens is local authorities bid to the programme to get money for particular projects. And those people in there, in those local authorities, will be people who might have studied geography or economics and have ended up in a local authority regeneration team. And they'll write a 
funding bid and it will say what they want to spend the money on. And that will go into the program and the group, it will be assessed by economists and people and then funded. And that, that, this is the moment when all the decisions are made. So here, when a designer gets involved, it, the decisions were made months ago and, and those, those um, decisions become outputs that really have to be met, otherwise the, um, the project's seen as a failure. So th th that, that moment when the decisions are made about what should happen, i.e. will regenerate this green space, will do this public realm, it happens so, so, so months before a, a designer is involved or someone sensitive to places, someone who's been like us, who has the skills to really think about place shaping. Um, and, and that's written into a grant agreement. So, for instance, one project I worked on in Tottenham, the project manager said very sensibly, he measured the town centre boundary and said, well, I'm going to, I'm applying to improve that many square metres of public realm. So in the funding uh, grant agreement, which is, which is the contract with the, the local authority, uh, it said, this many square metres of public realm will be improved, otherwise this project is a failure. So when it came to it, we started, we, you, you commission a designer, the designer starts looking at it, saying, well, actually we can do some tweaks, we can carefully tweak the, the environment in these special moments. But unfortunately, that kind of careful thinking couldn't be played out because they had agreed that they would improve so many square metres of public realm, which means, of course, repave it. And it's, 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 it, it, it just strikes me that if there was a moment in there where someone, an urbanist or an architect or an artist, was involved, then that could have been so much more sensitive and the product of that process could have been much better. I mean, it, it's often a sort of um, an artwork will be built into this as well. So, oh, new public realm, new artwork. There might be a drawing that says here. So. That, that, that moment of building that into the grant agreement means that it's inevitable that that artwork will be a thing in a space, in that position of a certain size, which means, which I'm, I'm not an artist, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that contemporary art practice probably would find that hard to swallow. Um, so when, when this project starts, um, setting, it, the local authority has a structure like this, I'll just be really, really quick. The project owner who won the budget, the project board that would be made up of people like highways, economy, procurement, um, will make all the decisions about the project. The project manager will carry them out and he'll enact a design process and a works process. Um, and in order to get design and works done, you go through procurement, which is another special moment and usually that means outside people come in often from a panel or a framework. So it's, it's only here that the designer will ever be involved in this process and even then the decisions are really being made here. Um, so although you know good design happens and it's lovely to be involved in that process, it strikes me that there's roles for artists and designers throughout that that we, we we're just not even even isn't even on our radar. Um, and it's thankless and it's not glamorous and nothing you do will ever get published, but it's, it's very important. Um, I also wanted to throw this in. This is how, this is what a project looks like. This is a, this is what I did. And, and for all of those people, everyone that's not the designer, this is what the project looks like. It's uh, this is a dashboard, and if, if, they, if it's green, it's going well. If it's red, it's going badly. If it's orange, it could go either way. And what, what does badly mean? Money -wise? That's a very good question. That's a really good question. So my, my, I didn't understand this until I was in the GI, and I just couldn't believe that this was the reality. Um, but what it means is uh, there's a spending program. If it's not spending as it should, it's orange. If it, if it doesn't spend as it should, 
for more than two months, it's red, and then there's a meeting. <laughs> and, um, what's what, sorry? Uh, grey is just stuff you can't change. I wasn't allowed to update that. <laughs> the, the economists do the grey. And, then, um, and so these here are, are, are risks and issues that I type in. So I would type in things like, you know, being an architect, I would type in things about quality. And then they would often email me back and say, why have you written this? It doesn't matter. And the frustrating thing was, spent on this one, the project manager said that this project is going badly. And I, I happen to know that this was an outstanding project, and the work the team was doing, the local authority and the design team, was, was genuinely exciting, really good. And we've managed to, God knows how, but we managed to procure a good architect for it, um, and, and a really, really good young team, really excited designers. But for one reason or another, because the money wasn't spending to, to plan, it was going badly. And, and the thing is, if, if a designer wasn't involved in this, or someone that cares about the place, no one would ever say, no one would ever stop and say, actually, aside from that spending profile, which is important because they've got to get the money spent, is, is, is what they're doing a good idea? You know, is, is the project worth doing? Is, is the design good? That it, it would never happen. Just going back to this uh, <coughs> diagram, there is a, such a thing as design review, which is, sounds exciting, and I, I looked forward to it because I thought, oh, this is amazing, we're going to sit down with these really important projects and we're going to talk about design. And, and, but the reality is that what you talk about is budget, procurement, what type of contract, it's, so, it's almost impossible to talk about design. But it does strike me that if if we, as a profession, or a group of people interested in places, and that sensitivity infiltrated these things, then we could instigate some of this. And, and the funny thing is that no, people aren't that resistant to it. They want help, and it, they, it is genuine. It's just, just the people aren't qualified in the right way. And, 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 um, and we have that skill set. We, it, we, we are it, they need us, but we're not interested in them, so it's our fault, it's completely our fault. The, the one drawback is, if you get involved, then you have to do dashboards, which, is, which makes you go mad. Um, so, that's one bit of experience that I had, which I think is really important, and I'm going to be really, really quick, Luke. Um, and I'm just going to talk about one other thing, because, so, since, since I've left, I, I've... Um, involved in various bits of work, and this is a project I did also with Fiona Scott um, and the London Borough of Waltham Forest. And, and this, this road here is where Assemble have their workshop, and they're going to talk later, I think. But th this was an amazing thing where we were asked to sort of look at the public realm master plan, so we were actually invited to do it. So it was a wonderful moment, I'm really proud to have been involved. But uh, of a certain area called Sutherland Road, and um, and and this was an amazing revelation that I had at some point because they asked us to look at these roads and to think about things like parking bays and things that I love and tree pits and all those ordinary everyday things, so I was very excited. Then I realised that this is an industrial area, but they had consented these huge housing schemes. Everything in dark grey is, isn't built. And, and it, it had all been consented, but no one knew what, what had. No one had ever drawn it. No one had ever drawn this. No one had ever drawn how this links together or, or, or what's happening in, on the in-between bits. So this project went from being about deciding on parking bays and curb details to um, pointing out that this development and this one had had no thought about what happens in between and the bits in between and then trying to help them understand that it's probably pretty important that this development and this development meet each other in some useful way. And, and it, it's just amazing that, that this is a red line between two schemes and neither of these people ever spoke to each other and no one had ever considered what would happen on that red line. And, and it, it's almost the point where you, you hear about the R of finding people because they put a post in a window and that's sort of professional negligence, but no one would ever worry if they, if, if, if this development and this development had, had, had not delivered a useful path between two places. 
And so these people had to walk all the way around because this just ended up being a generic bit of green, which is, of course, what you put in between the buildings, isn't it? Put green there. And, 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 and I mean, I'm, I'm just going to finish because I think I've been burning on a bit too much. For my, you know. Well, again, you know, just looking at this, um, just looking, looking at what's in between these two buildings, rather than this kind of, I mean, this is a, is a byproduct of planning because what, I mean, I guess I'll end on this point because it, it is something that's nice to say, is that the, where we're failing is that we, as, as architects, or the architectural profession, which I don't fully think I'm part of, um, uh, what we do is we, we go into battle talking about height and volume, and we have a fight with planners, um, and then they want you to squeeze in the immediacy space, um, and then and the parking that they need, the levels that they need, and then the product of that is, is city. That is, that's how we deliver city in this country, and that's, that's tragic, isn't it? That's really sad. Uh, and um, it strikes me that if, if they filled the bit in, in the middle in first and, and then did the buildings around it, that, that would be a much more productive um, way of, of delivering these spaces. And I, I, I've not got any photos of anything I've done because I, I don't know if I ever will be able to, but I feel pleased with it. <laughs>